Oh, and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to a quick review of one of my favorite type of watches, my favorite little subcategory, the $100 dive watch, or at least dive style watch. This is not a hardcore diving tool, but I'm sure it will cope with any water-based activities you care to throw at it nonetheless. I like this category so much, I've even made top 10 lists dedicated to it. Why? Because these watches do pretty much everything. They are great, versatile all-rounders. They can cope with most situations apart from maybe super dressy black tie dinners, for example. But then again, honestly, how many of each of those do we go to each year? Me, not all that many. And you get a lot of watch for your money with this style. This one, for example, has sapphire crystal, a Seagull movement, ceramic bezel insert, decent loom, full stainless case, full stainless bracelet, and all for well under $100. It's by Cadison, and it has a rather familiar look about it. Now, you saw the pop-up. This watch was sent to me by the Cadison official store on AliExpress. I do not have to send it back. I will therefore leave a link in the description of the video to the listing of this watch in the official store. These are available in four different color versions, either on metal bracelet, rubber strap, or both, with prices starting at around 90 US dollars. But do bear in mind you don't have to buy them from AliExpress if you don't want to. These are available from a variety of different outlets. Is it perfect? Of course not. Is it really rather good for the money? I think so. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. All right, let's get stuck straight into this one. For a sub 100 US dollar watch, you're not expecting much in the way of packaging, but what Cadison gives you is perfectly fine. It's a blue cardboard coffin with a fold over, tiny polishing cloth, and a couple of tiny instruction manuals, which obviously we do not read. And behind that sliver of foam, we have a watch. And it's a really good looking watch, I think. The retro design handles this pastel blue surprisingly well. Not an original design as such. This is very much based on a late 1950s Rolex Submariner, but there are a bunch of these retro style divers on the market. If your budget's tight, if you've only got $100 to spend, this one does everything you could ask of it. Now, because it's based on a watch from the 1950s, the dimensions do reflect that. 38 mil in diameter, a hair under 13 mil thick at 12.9, 45 and a half lug to lug, really compact, 20 mil lug width though, and sized up for me, seven inch wrist, it weighs in at 143 grams. What else have we got then? Well, we've got a really neat and tidy little case and bezel, I think, brushed on the sides and the top, but there's a high polished chamfer on the transition between the two, a really neat touch for the price. The bezel is well machined, the ceramic insert sits at a slight angle, and then there's a flat sapphire crystal well integrated on top of that. You do get a bit of light bounce from it because it's flat, but it's not a major issue. The 6.3 mil crown is unguarded, vintage style of course, and embossed with the Cadison logo. Now you might have expected a C, but it appears that they've chosen some kind of star arrow type thing. If you look really closely on the dial later on, it's also the dot in the eye of the Cadison. The bracelet has female end links, which I always appreciate seeing regardless of the size of the watch, but this one with 45 mil lug to lug and female end links is gonna be perfect for smaller than average wrists. It's rivet style with high polished edges and an all brushed upper surface. Now, this is a version two, and one of the key upgrades has been to the clasp. They've moved to this pretty simple press push button security number with a milled lower and three holes of micro adjust. They have also in their infinite wisdom decided to add a diver's extension. Perhaps you've already guessed this, but we will be seeing the clasp again a little later in the video. The case back is surprisingly nice. It's the Rolex slash Tudor style, but with a spec sheet etched into it and with a linear brush to the center section. The watch is powered by the Seiko NH35 as discussed. That means a ghost state position, but for this price, I forgive. Dial and hands. Now there are four versions of this watch available as noted. There's the Tiffany blue, there's a white, a blue with gold, and a full retro black with gold. Now the blue dial here has kind of gunmetal hands and surrounds to those applied indices. I think it works really well with the blue and helps add quite a bit of color contrast for legibility. The white dial has silver hands and surrounds. Perhaps that's not the one to go for if you value legibility, especially because the watch is smaller in the first place. Place. It's a classic Rolex pattern, 
triangle at 12, batons at 3, 6 and 9, circular indices everywhere else. Caddison printed above the hand stack, 200 metres, 660 feet, automatic printed beneath it. There's a half train track minute track around the outer edge and a high polished rehole which is really rather nice and not something you see very often. More noticeable at an angle than head on obviously. And I also like the bezel insert. The numerals are small, but then again, so is the watch, and it has a prominently raised loom pip in the triangle. It looks good, but how then is the loom? Well, I figured there would be a difference in the loom grade used because of the difference in dial colour, and I wasn't wrong. The blue watch on the right is clearly the brighter of the two after dark. There's always a bit of a price to be paid for that fultinaed look of the black and gilt. Now, when I speed these up, the blue dial version actually hangs in there okay. Like I said, this is not a hardcore dive watch, but it is by no means the worst loom I've seen for less than 100. The black and gold version though, yeah, perhaps that's not the one to go for. If you are concerned about loom, put it that way. And on wrist, it's a sweet little thing to wear. Perhaps given the size though, it should have been 10 grams lighter than it actually is, but it's a chunky case and a relatively wide bracelet, which I think probably explains the weight. Sub 13 mil though is pretty good for a 200 meter Seiko powered dive watch. It sits flush on me and those female end links really help it feel nice. Now the bracelet tapers from 20 down to 18, back up to 20 again at the clasp, Perhaps that could have been 2016 18 to really capture the vintage look and feel a bit better. There is, however, a rubber strap available either as an alternative to the bracelet or an addition. It's very soft and comfortable. And despite appearances, it is Cadison branded, but the branding actually on the underside of the buckle. It does look like it might be a bit of a fluff magnet though, so be aware of that. And the spring bar supplied, they give you four, but they're all too thin. You'll want to upgrade those to thicker items if you do go for the rubber strap. If people buy the black and gilt one especially though, I suspect many of them will be putting it on a bit of distressed leather. This style of watch always looks so good on brown leather, I think. And a couple of pocket shots. I'm not sure where people are with this shade of blue right now. I still quite like it. I'm not sick of it yet. And I think it looks good in context, actually on the wrist of a wearer. This watch being slightly smaller, there's perhaps a little bit less blue, so it's not quite as in your face. And I know it doesn't come with leather, but it just looks so good on leather that I couldn't resist showing you another pocket shot of the leather. But can a sub $100 dive watch be perfect? No, of course it can't. I have one and a half complaints about this one. The bezel action is the half. It's okay, but it's not much better than okay. It's a 90 click bezel for a start. I still haven't worked out why 90 click bezels actually exist. And the action is a bit light. There's a bit of bounce from this blue dial version as well. Interestingly, no bezel bounce on the black and gold. It felt better, so perhaps a little bit of inconsistency of manufacturing there. And my whole complaint is the clasp. Now the blue watch is what Caddison described as the version two. They're very proud to tell you that they've upgraded the clasp. I'm not sure if it was actually much of an upgrade. It feels a bit thin, a bit rattly. Three holes is not enough given the distance between the links and there is that pointless divers extension that is the source of much of the rattling. There needs to be a law passed against these things and 90 click bezels while we're at it. That's the only way I can see brands stopping using them. They seem to be some kind of perceived value add, but in reality, they add nothing but rattling. This is the version one bracelet. The links are the same, but the clasp is different. It's more Rolex style in appearance, but it has that really awkward internal adjustment system. It's a proper pain in the ass but it's one I would probably have been prepared to live with because it feels much more solid and less noisy than the clasp they replaced it with. Perhaps Caddison will get it right for the version three. But apart from that, there is a lot to like here. It's a good looking little watch. The watch head feels very solid, very nicely done, very nicely finished. As discussed, there are a lot of other watches going for this look, including San Martin's SN004, now also in a version two. Those are about $180 at the moment during the sale, so exactly twice the price of the Caddison. If you have the extra money and you're looking for this style of watch, you should probably go for the San Martin. The loom is better, the bezel is better, and the clasp is a lot better. But if you're sticking to under 100 US dollars spent, this thing is a real cutie and I'm sure it won't disappoint. So there you have it. I remain unconvinced that the version two is actually an upgrade over the version one. Perhaps we'll have to wait for the version three for them to finally sort out the clasp. But for less than $100, this is a really, really strong offering, I think, by Caddison. If you're looking for a retro diver on a strict budget, this should be towards the top of your list. 
If you don't fancy this one though, there are plenty more fish in the sea. Check out that top 10 list I alluded to earlier, or have a look at the Steel Dive 1970, one of the most ridiculously underpriced watches on the market. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you all again in a future video.